Picture a man who views life as a chess game, where each piece removed from the board represents a life taken. This was the reality of Alexander Pachushkin, infamously known as the chessboard killer. This cold-blooded monster was convicted for 49 murders, yet he boasted of 62 victims. His ambition was as dark as his deeds, to become Russia's most prolific serial killer. Join us as we delve into the life and crimes of this notorious figure. Born on April 9, 1974 in Mitishchi, a suburb of Moscow, Alexander Pachushkin's journey to becoming the chessboard killer began in his early years. His life was far from idyllic, marked by a problematic home environment and an unsettling fascination with violence. His father abandoned the family when he was still young, leaving Pachushkin in the care of his mother and grandparents. His grandfather, a retired military officer, recognized his grandson's intelligence and took him under his wing. It was he who introduced young Alexander to the game of chess. Chess became a sanctuary for Pachushkin, an escape from the harsh realities of his life. His grandfather's influence was profound, shaping his analytical thinking and strategic planning, but beneath the surface there were signs of something more sinister. Pachushkin was known to have a cruel streak, often torturing animals and showing little remorse for his actions. This disturbing behavior hinted at a deep-seated malice, a precursor to the atrocities he would later commit. His obsession with chess was also concerning. He didn't just play the game, he lived it, immersing himself in its strategies and maneuvers. It was not just a pastime, but a reflection of his mindset, a dark foreshadowing of what was to come. As he grew older, his obsession with chess transformed into a far more sinister game. In 1992, Pichushkin claimed his first victim, marking the start of a decade-long reign of terror. This first victim, a colleague from his job, was lured to a park in Moscow under the pretense of a friendly drinking session. The unsuspecting victim had no idea of the fate that awaited him. As Pichushkin's thirst for killing intensified, so did the frequency of his murders. From a slow start, he progressed to claiming victims at a chillingly regular pace. His method was as consistent as it was horrifying. He would target the vulnerable and isolated, often the homeless or elderly. He would invite them to share a drink with him in the park, and once their guard was down, he would attack. His modus operandi was brutal, yet coldly calculated. Pichushkin would strike his victims with a hammer, aiming for the back of their heads. After the initial blow, he would push a vodka bottle into the resulting wound. This grotesque signature became a frightening hallmark of his crimes, earning him the nickname, the chessboard killer. Pichushkin's actions were not driven by personal animosity or financial gain. Rather, he was spurred on by a perverse sense of competition and ambition. He was determined to outdo the infamous Russian serial killer Andrei Chikatilo in the number of victims claimed. Pichushkin saw his murders as a game, each victim a piece in his deadly chess match. But this wasn't a game where the pieces could be reset. Each life taken was real. Each person had a story, a family, dreams and hopes. Yet to Pichushkin, they were merely a means to an end, a stepping stone on his path to infamy. In his chillingly calm confessions, he declared that life without murder was life without purpose. For him, each murder was another notch on his metaphorical bedpost, another step towards his ultimate goal. With each victim, Pichushkin was moving closer to his gruesome goal. The game was in full swing, and the chessboard killer was leading by a terrifying margin. In June 2006, the deadly game came to an end as Pichushkin was finally captured. The net had been slowly tightening around the chessboard killer as the authorities painstakingly pieced together the clues left behind in his brutal spree. The turning point came with the discovery of a metro ticket found on one of the victims, leading investigators to surveillance footage of Pachushkin with the victim. This crucial piece of evidence was the final piece of the puzzle. Pachushkin was arrested and in a shocking twist he confessed to his crimes. Not only did he confess, but he seemed to relish in the recounting of his gruesome deeds, boasting of the lives he had taken. He claimed to have killed 62 people, a number that would have made him Russia's most prolific serial killer. However, he wasn't aware that two of his victims had survived. The trial was a spectacle in itself. Pichushkin, ever the showman, reveled in the attention. He recounted his crimes with a chilling indifference, 
detailing his methods and motivations with a cold detachment that sent shivers down the spines of those in the courtroom. The evidence against him was overwhelming, and the verdict was a foregone conclusion. Pichushkin was sentenced to life in prison, with the first 15 years to be served in solitary confinement. This was the maximum sentence under Russian law, and was seen as a reflection of the severity of his crimes. The judge, in his closing remarks, stated that Pichushkin had shown no remorse for his actions, and that his crimes were of such a brutal and cruel nature that they demanded the harshest punishment. Today, Pichushkin remains behind bars, his deadly game halted. His chilling story serves as a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity. As we delve into the darkest corners of the human psyche, we find stories that both horrify and fascinate us. Stories like that of Alexander Pichushkin, the chessboard killer. In the end, Pichushkin's deadly chess game was over. Pichushkin's reign of terror left a lasting impact, not just on the victims' families, but on the whole of Russia. The sheer brutality of his crime sent shockwaves through society, prompting a nationwide conversation about mental health and the roots of evil. People began to question what could drive an individual to such horrific acts, leading to a surge in psychological research and studies into criminal behavior. In the wake of Pichushkin's capture, law enforcement agencies across Russia were forced to reevaluate their procedures. His ability to evade capture for so long exposed significant gaps in their investigative processes, prompting major reforms. A new emphasis was placed on forensics, and public awareness campaigns were launched to educate citizens about personal safety. The societal and psychological ripples of Pichushkin's crimes continue to be felt today. His name is synonymous with the worst kind of evil, a stark warning of what can happen when humanity is lost.